Well, right, Donald Trump is on fire. That is probably an understatement. He's won three of the first four contests of this year. And if you take a look at the dozen or so states that will be part of Super Tuesday, a little more than a few days from now, he has leads, double digit leads in more than half. Uh, and it's a very competitive race in uh, Ted Cruz's home state of Texas. Can you imagine if Trump were to take down the Republican senator in that state and then go on to take it uh, from Marco Rubio in his state of Florida, where he also leads? Could that be it? What to make of the phenomenon that is Donald Trump? Who better to ask than the former Republican presidential nominee, Mitt Romney, who joins us exclusively right now. Governor, very good to have you. Thank you, Neil. Good to join you. What do you make of this race? It's certainly a little different than four years ago. Well, certainly. You see on the, uh, on the left, Bernie Sanders. On the right, Donald Trump, both uh, speaking to the anger and frustration that people in the country feel about the uh, lack of progress in Washington. Uh, they feel Washington has, has been uh, uh, incapable of getting the job done. They want something to happen. And uh, uh, both of the people who are really connecting with voters right now are, are people who suggest they can make things happen. You know, the, I think I was talking to one analyst last night, Governor, on Fox Business, who was saying it's palpable rage, not detailed rage, but palpable rage. They want stuff done. What do you make of that? Well, I think they feel that the political class uh, has been uh, fiddling and diddling and not doing what's necessary to create more jobs, to fix our schools, to, to keep foreign imports from taking away American jobs. Uh, to secure the border. There are a whole host of things people are concerned about, and they've heard politicians make promises on these topics for years and years and years, and no progress is being made. And uh, along come a, come a couple of guys who say, hey, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it. I'm going to, if you will, kick over the table, as Newt Gingrich said. Uh, I'm going to go to Washington and, and blow things up. And, and I think that has uh, captured a lot of people's imagination. And, and as a result, you're seeing extraordinary crowds and support, both for Bernie Sanders and for Donald Trump. You know, uh, there's always this talk about ground games and getting your people out. I remember in the case of Nevada, Governor, four years ago, after you had lost to Newt Gingrich in South Carolina, that was very instrumental, uh, that win in Nevada, with the ground game that you uh, got going and turned things around. Um, the other guys couldn't get that ground game together against Donald Trump. So I guess what I'm asking you is, is at this point, is it his nomination to lose? Well, I think there's no question but that Donald Trump has the clearest path to become the Republican nominee. I think for the other people still in the race, uh, their, uh, their path is becoming a, a slimmer and slimmer uh, 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 opening. And uh, they're having a difficult time communicating to their supporters just how they can become the nominee. It's not impossible. Yeah. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's very difficult for any one of the uh, non-Donald Trump uh, contenders uh, to uh, to be able to be a, a a real threat unless perhaps the field narrows. The field narrowing would, I think, create an opening, but that doesn't sh seem to be uh, happening other than Jeb Bush, who I think uh, really put country first by saying, look, I'm going to step aside and let my supporters go to someone else who they feel uh, is uh, representative of the kind of views that the country needs. Now, you have not come out in support of anyone uh, so far. What, what are you waiting for? Well, fr frankly, I'd like to see... Uh, a number of things from the candidates, not just their positions on uh, on issues in some detail, and some candidates are more thorough in in uh, laying out what they're going to do than others. But I'd also like to see their their back taxes. I, I, I'd like to see uh, you know wh where they where they filed their taxes uh, in in the last several years. I'm not talking about their taxes this year. I'm talking about the taxes that have already been filed with the IRS. And Donald Trump and Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz have none. Uh, shown us their their back taxes, and you know this was an issue in my campaign. So I'm. Well, I'm how, how far back are you talking about? Well, just a couple of years. Uh, you know, it be the the last two years that have already been filed, and and this will give us a real sense of whether these people are are on the up and up, and whether they've been telling us things about themselves that are true or not. So I, I mean, I, I think, you know, frankly, I think we have good reason to believe that there's a bombshell in Donald Trump's taxes. What do you mean? Well, I think there's something there. Either he's not anywhere near as wealthy as he says he is, or he hasn't been paying the kind of taxes we would expect him to pay, or, or perhaps he hasn't uh, uh, been giving money to the to the vets or to the disabled like he's been telling us he's been doing. And uh, and I think that's uh, the, the reason that I think that there's a bombshell in there, is because every time he's asked by about his taxes, he 
dodges and delays and says, well, we're working on it. Hey, we're not talking about the taxes that are coming due this year. Of course they're working on those. They won't be ready for months. We're talking about taxes already filed, back taxes. And my back taxes, when I ran in 2012, my back taxes I put out in January of 2012. We're now, you know, we're now in late February, and we still haven't seen either Donald Trump's or Marco Rubio's or Ted Cruz's taxes. And frankly, the, the voters have a right to see those tax returns before they decide who our nominee ought to be. Well, you know, we have gotten to learn enough about Marco Rubio and his financial troubles and student loans and the rest and all that. We have an idea that obviously he's not in, in Mr. Trump's financial league, but Donald Trump is that only yesterday, I believe, Governor, that he tries to pay as low a tax rate as he possibly can. So maybe he's leery because when you released your taxes, everyone made a big deal of the fact that uh, you paid at a lower rate, a capital gains rate, dividend rate that was lower than the standard rate, all perfectly legal and fine. But even in, in the interest of transparency, they were all over you like, you know, you know, you know what? Well, and that's the good reason for getting these things out before the voters make their choices to who our nominee will be. Because you're absolutely right. They were all over me for my taxes, became a big issue. But I put my taxes out in January of 2012. And that gave people a chance to digest it and decide whether I was going to be the nominee or not. And if, in fact, Donald Trump's taxes or Marco Rubio's or Ted Cruz's have some real problems in there, let's get him out there and see him. But, but I think it's pretty clear that given Donald Trump's dodging and weaving and delay, I think the last time he was asked about his taxes, he said, well, it's going to be months. Look, people have a right to, to know if there's a problem in those taxes before they decide who well, are not. Well, what kind of problem be. would you envision? Either the low rate that he's paying, if that's the case, or, 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 or the fact that he doesn't give as much to charity or veterans groups or whatever? What? Well, you're, you know, you, you've gone through a, a, a good list there. Uh, one we could find he doesn't have anywhere near as much income as we might think he would have with a $10 billion net worth or or he doesn't pay any taxes, or he pays very, very low taxes. Well, you, you're, are you saying that you think he's worth significantly less than that? I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying the fact that he is, is so uh, aggressive in avoiding any discussion of taxes, of his taxes, and is not willing to put them out so far, suggests that there's something in there he doesn't want us to, to see. By the way, any time you talk about money, Donald Trump likes to tell you how wealthy he is, how he's worth billions of dollars. And the first time he was asked about his taxes on the Today Show, he said, you know, they're beautiful. All right, they're big and they're beautiful. Well, well, great. Let us see him. He likes to he likes to tell people how well he's done. Why isn't he willing to let us look at the tax returns? And that's something. I mean, this was an issue in my campaign. That's why I'm so sensitive to it. It's an issue in my campaign. We're going to select our nominee. We really ought to see from all three of these fellows what their taxes look like to see if there's an issue there. I think in Donald Trump's case, it's likely to be a bombshell. When you say a bombshell, that you question the figures he has given um, and the, 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 the charitable donations he has made. Yeah, it's very possible. Right. I mean, you know, Donald Trump has said he's the best in the country for the disabled veterans and for the disabled generally. Well, if his taxes show that, it, that mm -hmm. he hasn't made any contributions to the disabled veterans or to the disabled generally, that would be a big issue. So, and I'm not saying that's the case. I have no evidence of that. But I'm just saying there are things that could be issues. And when people decide they don't want to give you their taxes, it's usually because there's something they don't want you to see. Uh, we'll wait. We'll see what happens. Uh, it's always a thorny subject for anyone rich or poor. Uh, Governor Romney, thank you very, very much.